John, you ready? Oh, hey! Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are officially starting back up over here, so we are now uh, like welcome to the mic, Mr. John Irvine. Yay! I'm sure you all got the news uh, on Fox News this week. They they said that Jeb Bush may be running for president. Oh! I can feel the love in the room. Has he got Hillary's ticket? <laughs> So, so according to Fox News, uh, Hillary does have the Democratic nomination lined up, so this truly is the, uh, the lesser of two evils. So what would you do, a body count to see which one was less evil? Uruguay. <laughs> what would you do? So anyway, uh, my subject is the mil militarization of the local police. Uh, Shane and, and Dennis mm -hmm. and Kathy and I drove over to the uh, Oakland County Sheriff's Office and we knocked on the door and they were closed because it was after 5 o'clock. So we, we drove behind the place and there's this uh, parking lot that says authorized vehicles only. So we figured, well, hey, this is where they got to be hiding the good stuff, right? <laughs> so we, we said, what the hell with that sign? We just drove right in. <laughs> And I was fully ready to blame Dennis and Shane for it. <laughs> but we didn't get caught. So, but we couldn't find anything. There was two parking lots there, and we couldn't find anything. So we had to find whatever we could find on the Internet. And the Internet is, uh, Oakland County is going to be testing this hailstorm thing. And so what I wanted to do was create a video that, um, I wanted to switch back and forth between videos and talking. So... I made just a video of it because it's a lot easier to try and switch back and forth. So here's the video that I created, and what I tried to create was not only what are they doing, but why are they doing it, and what is the possible solution to what they're doing. So with that, we'll go ahead and roll my video. Welcome. In this video, we will attempt to identify the problem, identify the cause, and recommend a solution. Benjamin Franklin had this to say, They who can give up freedom to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. A snake rots from the head down. On a national level, we have the TSA, an organization dedicated to the destruction of the Fourth Amendment. Here we have what they see should you decide to go through their naked body scanner. Refuse, and here is what you will get. This lady is getting her annual breast exam. This gentleman is getting his annual rectal exam. And this gentleman, please turn your head and cough. The TSA has never stopped anything or caught any terrorist. It is all theater, with the goal of getting Americans to accept this kind of treatment. Benjamin Franklin was right. Those who accept this deserve neither safety or liberty. So what exactly does the Fourth Amendment say in regards to this type of search? The Fourth Amendment is designed to protect people's natural right to property by establishing legal rules of due process. It says the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized this means that agents of the government are not allowed to search your body or anything you own against your will without a written warrant issued by a duly appointed judge on the local level, we have gone from the Andy of Mayberry look to this, to the Darth Vader look, to the Darth Vader in an armored tank with automatic weapons look. The cities within the state of Pennsylvania are facing a crisis, a shortfall in their pension funds of more than six billion dollars. So you're sitting in a Pittsburgh City Council meeting and there is a few bucks in the treasury. Should we put the money in the pension fund? Or how about this? 
Let's buy a sound cannon. Yeah, that's it. Let's buy a sound cannon. This contraption, designed to break up lawful demonstrations, was dragged out at the recent G20 meeting. This sound cannon was procured by people who have sworn an oath to defend the Constitution from all enemies, both foreign and domestic. This sound cannon is a direct violation of the First Amendment, and the people who purchased and used it are guilty of treason. So what does the First Amendment say? The First Amendment states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. This means that the government cannot decide what people are allowed to say or how they say it. This also establishes freedom of association guaranteeing that individuals can gather together to engage in any type of speech or activity they want provided it does not harm anyone else. The First Amendment also explicitly prohibits the establishment of a state religion. This provision was extremely important to many Americans who had left England and other nations specifically to escape religious persecution. In many ways, the First Amendment is the most important. It's not just about speech, but about the right of all people to think and believe whatever they want. In many countries around the world, this freedom doesn't exist. Many people throughout history have spent decades in prison simply because they said the wrong thing. The First Amendment prevents the U.S. government from dictating to the public which ideas are acceptable or from punishing people who express unpopular views. Shortly after the Boston bombing, local police showed up in armored vehicles dressed as Darth Vader with automatic weapons. With this kind of equipment available, Exactly what are these local police departments preparing for? In Oakland County, Sheriff Bouchard is testing for Homeland Security Hailstorm. Although the sheriff refuses to give any details, here is what we know about it. Hailstorm is a device that tricks all cell phones within its range that it is a cell tower. Once a cell phone locks onto it, the cell phone's data can be downloaded to the memory in the Hailstorm device. Clearly, Hailstorm is a Fourth Amendment violation. The sheriff says it will not be used without a court order. It has been revealed that there is a backdoor in iPhones so that government can turn on the microphone and camera with the phone owner not knowing about it. Also, federal law requires that cell phone companies must be able to supply the exact location within three feet of any cell phone. With all of the military equipment and spying on the public going on, clearly the government is expecting a huge revolt by the people. What do they know that we all don't know? Well, here it is. Benjamin Franklin said this, When the people find that they can vote themselves money, that will herald the end of the republic. Here is a graph showing the gross domestic product and the national debt. In 1964, President Lyndon Johnson began the war on poverty and the war in Vietnam. The dollar was backed by gold at the rate of $35 equals one ounce of gold. The world was becoming aware that the United States was printing far more money than could be covered by the gold supply and started a buying frenzy of United States gold at $35 per ounce. The gold reserves of the United States were being depleted at an alarming rate. So President Nixon did this. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar 
into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. The dollar had no intrinsic value. The Constitution says the Congress shall coin money and set the value thereof. How do you set the value of something that is backed by nothing? Inflation took off, and Nixon called for wage and price controls. When that didn't work, President Gerald Ford came up with this button, WIN. WIN stood for WHIP INFLATION NOW. The dollar was worth what anybody thought it was worth, and the worth was declining. Needless to say, Jerry's idea didn't work. A problem for the United States is that we have one party masquerading as two parties. Represented here by this bird of prey, the bald eagle. It has a right wing, the Republicans, and a left wing, the Democrats. Although the rhetoric is a little different, the bird of prey moves in the same direction no matter who is in office, as depicted in the following graph. Fiat currency systems historically have a lifespan, on average, of roughly 70 years. They always fail because politicians always overpromise, and the excess spending ends up in inflation without the need to raise taxes. We can see in the graph that GDP is mostly driven by inflation and debt is closing in on GDP because of overspending. We can see that the debt began to level off in the Clinton's second term because he lost both houses of Congress to the Republicans. The Republicans in Congress cut spending and the country was in the middle of a tech boom. We can see that when George W. Bush was elected with both houses of Congress, spending exploded. We can see under President Obama the spending spree continues and the national debt now is larger than the gross domestic product. Clearly this is not sustainable. Most of the spending is coming from entitlements like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and welfare. Benjamin Franklin warned that once the people discovered that they could vote themselves money, that would herald the end of the Republic. It looks like we have reached that point. Politically, it is impossible to cut any of this spending. Some believe that all we have to do is elect the right president and he will fix it lickety-split. Some believe we need a balanced budget amendment. The problem cannot be fixed unless the country gets rid of the Federal Reserve System. And here is an explanation of why. Before the establishment of the Federal Reserve, there was no need for personal income tax. The Federal Reserve was created in 1913, and that very same year, the Constitution was amended to allow income tax. Do you really think this was just a coincidence? Ask yourself how much income tax you've paid over your lifetime. Much of it has been silently siphoned away into the hands of those who own the system. Yes, this system has owners. Who they are is an even bigger secret that we'll get to shortly. But first, we need to understand the mumbo-jumbo of the so-called debt ceiling. It's all based on a huge paradox. There was interest due on that bond and there was interest due on every one of those loans that the banks made. That means that there is interest due on every dollar in existence. Let me ask you something. If you borrow the very first dollar into existence, and that's the only dollar that exists on the planet, but you promise to pay it back plus another dollar's worth of interest, where do you get the second dollar to pay the interest? The answer is that you have to borrow that one into existence and promise to pay it back with interest as well. So now there are two dollars in existence, but you owe four, and so on and so on. The result is there's never enough currency to pay the debt. There is always more debt in the system than there is currency in existence to pay the debt. Therefore, the whole system is impossible. It is finite. It will come to an end one day. What would happen if the government stopped borrowing to do deficit spending? Are the payments on those treasury bonds going to stop? What would happen if the public stopped borrowing and going deeper into debt? Are your house and car payments going to stop? No, 
There is a payment due every month on the principal plus the interest on every dollar in existence and those payments do not stop. If we stop borrowing, then no new currency is created to replace the currency that we used to make those payments. Whether you're making a payment on a loan or paying tax to make a payment on a bond, the portion of the payment that goes to pay off the principal extinguishes that portion of the debt. But the debt also extinguishes the currency. Currency and debt are like matter and antimatter. When they meet, they annihilate each other. If we just pay off the principal only on all the loans and bonds that exist, the entire currency supply just vanishes. So if we don't go deeper into debt every year, look what happens. The whole thing goes into a deflationary collapse under the weight of those payments. Politicians and pundits alike talk about balancing the budget, paying down the debt, and living within our means. They don't understand that that is deflationary. It is impossible to do under our current monetary system without collapsing the whole economy. This is why any talk of a debt ceiling is not only ridiculous, it's delusional. The system is designed to require ever-increasing levels of debt just to continue. And that's why politicians will always kick the can down the road and raise this so-called debt ceiling over and over again until the whole system finally collapses under its own weight. In other words, they don't want it to collapse on their watch. The Founding Fathers of the United States knew the dangers of central banking and fought to free themselves from this very thing. The Revolutionary War started out as a tax revolt, but now we must pay tax just to have a monetary system. Having just suffered through the hyperinflation of the continental dollar, which was printed into oblivion to finance the Revolutionary War, they understood the dangers of fiat currency and debt-based monetary systems. So to protect future generations from institutional theft and out-of-control government, they wrote into the Constitution that only gold and silver can be money for the simple fact that you can't print them. Our current system is not only unconstitutional, but it robs us of the liberty and prosperity our forefathers fought and died for. We are all feeling the effects of ignoring the Constitution right now. By forcing more currency into circulation, our purchasing power is diluted. Inflation is a slow and insidious stealth tax that is simply the result of this debt-based monetary system. So we have identified that local police are preparing for a general collapse. Organizations like the TSA are there to get us used to living in a police state. We can see that our current economic system is unsustainable and will eventually collapse. So here is the biggest problem of all. No matter what evidence that may exist, 95% of the public will deny it or refuse to look at the evidence. The phenomenon is known as normalcy bias or cognitive dissonance. Nature set up the world this way so that societies could exist without everybody questioning everything. Without cognitive dissonance, societies would be in a permanent state of mass chaos. So exactly what is cognitive dissonance? The theory of cognitive dissonance was first posited by American social psychologist Leon Festinger in 1957 to explain the discomfort and mental stress that we feel when our beliefs, ideals, or values don't match up to reality. Festinger's theory states that when people are in a state of dissonance, that is, when their beliefs or values don't match up with their behavior or experiences, they will adjust those beliefs or values, or even adjust their perception of reality, in order to achieve consonance. Furthermore, Fessinger showed that people will actively avoid situations or information that might challenge those beliefs and values in order to avoid dissonance. Indeed, 9-11 represents one of the greatest examples of cognitive dissonance in our own era. The public was so traumatized by the reporting of the events of that day, that they have become emotionally invested in believing in the official account of those events. As a number of practicing psychologists, psychiatrists, and counselors have explained, these responses are a natural defense mechanism when we are faced with something threatening to our worldview. So whenever we say, I refuse to believe, we can be sure that the evidence that's coming our way is not bearable and that it's, going, it's conflicting with our worldview much too much. Denial protects people from this kind of anxiety. As I thought about all of these responses, I realized that 
what is common to every one of them is the emotion of fear. People are afraid of being ostracized, they're afraid of being alienated, they're afraid of being shunned, they're afraid of their lives being inconvenienced, they'd have to change their lives, they're afraid of being confused, they're afraid of psychological deterioration, they're afraid of feeling helpless and vulnerable and they're afraid that they won't be able to handle the feelings that are coming up. None of us want to feel helpless and vulnerable so we want to defend ourselves and the way we often do that is with anger. So then we become angry and when we become angry then we become indignant we become offended we want to ridicule the messenger we want to pathologize the messenger and we want to censor the messenger most people believe that if any of this were true one of these people would be telling us about it we call these folks the gatekeepers these are the people who are there to shield the public from learning the truth about what is going on for example, if Rush Limbaugh decided one day to tell the truth about the Federal Reserve System, he would be off the air in a heartbeat. If Sean Hannity would open the discussion on chemtrails, he would be finished. This is why Rush Limbaugh is on 600 stations and Alex Jones is on the Internet. And believe me, they are working overtime to figure out a way to shut down the Internet. Many liberty-minded individuals believe that the best shot we have is to try to take over the Republican Party. We must understand that we have a one-party system, and within that one-party system, we have low-information voters who are steadfastly loyal to either the right wing or the left wing. In order to change the direction of the bird of prey, we must take over both wings. The system has set up a system of gerrymandering that locks seats into the left or right wing. So here is the solution. 95% of the population will not respond to facts. They are Republicans or Democrats, much like a person is a Tigers fan. If a person is a Tigers fan, nothing you could say would change that. This is why we must aim our message at the 5% of the population who lacks cognitive dissonance. If you are watching this video and have not already shut it off, you probably lack the normalcy bias or cognitive dissonance. We need to create a new organization, not a third party, an organization determined to take over both parties. And we will call this organization Rhinos and Dinos for Liberty. The parties are most vulnerable during the primaries. Low information voters normally don't show up to vote in primaries. If the district the candidate is to run in has been gerrymandered to be a Democratic seat, then it makes sense to run as a Democrat. And if the district is gerrymandered to be a Republican seat, then run as a Republican. Getting the 5% to the polls for the primary is the trick. Once you have the nomination, the low information voters will elect you in the general election. It may be too late to try this, this election, but we need to set our sights on the next election cycle. So you, you can see this video on uh, Report USA if you want to see it again or show it to other people. I, I think uh, 
You know, the message here is is that 95% of the people will not respond to facts. And you've all been there. You know, I listen to you and tell, you know, my kid thinks I'm nuts. Our kids think we're nuts. <laughs> you know? And I raised our, I, you know, I, we sat down for dinner with our kids every night and explained this stuff to them. Yep. And yep. I would tell them. my son, you know, he, I'd ask my kids every day what they teach in school today. And my oldest son particularly, he would come home, and, you know, with this history lesson and, yeah, the teacher told us it's a democracy. Well, I want you to go home, go back to school tomorrow, and you tell your teacher that it's a constitutionally limited republic and it's not a democracy. <laughs> you know, and uh, the Civil War was started over slavery. No, it wasn't. Here's why it was started. You know, and, and all of these we things. Did. You know that. You know. So our kids are awake, but they're they're afraid. You know, like uh, cognitive dissonance is a way to avoid reality. And we need to understand that, and we can't just get mad at people who won't listen, because 95% of the people won't listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need to find those 5% that will, because God set this system up for 5% of the population. That's why, you know, at the end, it ended with 1% of the population started the American Revolution, Revolution and it was fought by 3% of the population. Right. So everybody thinks that everybody back then supported this thing. They didn't. You know, so that's the message, and I hope you go to reportusa.com and. Uh